Hey, welcome back to John's Garage. And today we're going to be working on John's Garage. And I had a little piece come off this trolley and it's white plastic. So we're going to find out how to fix that. It's because I found this one hanging off the garage door opener. This is a piece of the wear pad. You can see it's worn out. This garage door opener is about 19 years old. Okay, let's see what we got in the box here. So we got these wear pads. There are four in here. And just some instructions that say don't kill yourself while doing this. And this part number, it's Chamberlain Craftsman, they're all the same, 041A7276. The original service manual says part number 183A163, but this new part supersedes that old part. And it's used on almost all the square rail type Chamberlain Craftsman and LiftMaster garage door openers. You... Okay, so I cut all the zip ties for these wires because we're going to have to take the unit down, the motor, and I'm going to unplug it. And now we're going to take note of our wires, one, two, and three. We have our orange, orange, white, and then... That goes to the button on the wall. And then these go to the cameras, the safety cameras. These two are white and these are white with a black stripe. So I'm gonna loosen the hanger bolt, half inch is what I have on here. You might have something different. Just gonna use a half inch on each side. And I'm just going to take the nut off. I'm not going to remove the bolt yet. I'm going to use the bolt to hang it here while I go and disconnect the other end. So I've got a lock washer and a nut. Do the same on the other side. I'm going to leave this on the last like two threads or three threads just so that I don't have this fall while I'm disconnecting the other end. I have an eight foot painter's ladder. This is where your paint can goes. You could disconnect the motor and just set it on here while you go and disconnect the other. Oh, up by the garage door header, I'm gonna undo this wire ring and we're gonna undo this wire ring and Let's get it disconnected from the door. So let's pull this string down to release your trolley. Push this through. Running out of hands here. Go. So just let this gently hang there. And the trolley's out of the way. This is pretty easy to take off. Just turn it and it comes right out. That's all you gotta do if this side's open. So you just go up in there and it's back on and you go like that. Pretty, pretty easy to get off. So pull back, twist, rotate down, it's off. Okay, so we got it resting on our ladder. I took out those two bolts and I've still got the pin on the other end holding it up. And what I'm gonna do now is drop the motor down onto this box. So I'm gonna hold the motor, push the ladder out of the way, scoot this box underneath it. Okay, so I got it resting on a box here. Now I'm gonna go take the pin out of the other end and then pick up the whole thing and lay it flat on the floor. Okay, I already took the wire out of here. I'm just gonna push that pin through and then grab this whole thing and uh, put the whole thing flat on the floor. And to get the carriage to go off the end, we gotta get this out of the way and this out of the way. 
So we need 7 sixteenths. That's a stop bolt for the for the carriage and trolley not to go any further. And then here we need a 9/16 on the bottom and a 5/8 on the top. So this has a nut and a lock washer on the bottom. Now we need to take the tension off the chain. I haven't taken that off yet, so I gotta take the loosen these two and then take the master link out and take the wire through here when I take this out. So we're half inch, so I'm gonna use an open and a box and work those against each other and undo it. Since I don't want my adjustments back here to have to be redone. Um, I'm going to tie my chain in place so it doesn't fall off the sprocket and get out of position. Uh, just tie some string through here just to keep it on the sprocket uh, before I remove the uh, nuts off the chain. Okay, so in the end here is a little opening. So we're going to use a screwdriver to spread this open and get the master link off of it. Got it to spread and push back. So we have that. Take this top piece off. Oop. And go pick that up. So you have this piece. piece that flew over here. We have this piece on the bottom. There's our three pieces. And now we just take the wire and well, let's get this pulley out of the way. There we go. Take that big bolt out of the top. Take this wheel out. We'll clean that up. Take this wire out of the way. Take the carriage. Slide it off the end. And you can see our wear pads. Only one got damaged. So we're going to replace them all. All four are getting replaced. And then we'll clean up our rail. You can tell my garage was textured and drywalled textured and painted after this garage door opener was installed. Okay, I used some degreaser and made all the parts shiny and clean. Clean the rail, clean the trolley, clean the carriage. Now we got to put the new parts in. New wear pads, just squeeze the edges. There we go, that's one. Squeeze the edges. As you can see here, there's a little hole. So there's a little tab on each side, plus these two. There we go. I hope I'm on camera here. So little holes here and holes here. Squeeze the edges and then when you get it close just pop it in there. So there's two, three, one more to go. So squeeze the edges. go. Yeah. 
clean this too. So these parts are ready to go back on. Put some WD-40 on the rail and chain. Okay, so the part where the chain has the long uh, bolt with the screw and the, the wire connects here, so it goes on this way. So just like this. Okay. Now we'll put the, uh, the wire through and then put this idler pulley wheel and then take our big bolt and thread that in. I'm not going to tighten it yet. And get our stop bolt and our nut with the little lock washer on it. Plaster dust from my ceiling when I plastered it. And now we run our wire back over here. Take our little chain that there, put the full link, and then take our little split master link and push that till it clicks. There. We got the master link on there. Now we'll pull our, our chain up to it. Put our chain through there, put our, oops, this goes on the other side. Put our split washer on that side and our adjustment nut here. Sure your chain is not twisted and then tighten it up when this gets close and you got the right amount of tension on your chain you just work these two wrenches against each other like that and lock it in place, making sure your chain is not twisted. So you can see the chain lies flat like this to go through the sprocket at the other end. We got the right amount of tension. We lock these two nuts together. And now all we got to do is put some lubricant on here, use whatever you think you should use WD-40, not something too heavy um, or too light, but uh, you can use some very light grease, but not like wheel bearing grease, something light. Let's come back and lock these in. I got to get the uh, nut and split washer on the bottom of here. Nine sixteenths. Stop.
stop pin in place. Chain is tight. This is tight. This is tight. Take off this string. It did not move. That's what we wanted. So we've set this end on our box. Got the other end just setting on the spring. I'm going to go up there and lift this into place and put the pin in there and the wire ring. I did lubricate this wheel inside so it can move freely up and down as needed. So this uh, pin is in, the wire ring is retaining it. And now let's go and lift it up onto the lower. Okay, before I get this thing too high in the sky, I'm going to lube the rail and chain um, before I lift it up onto the ladder. I lifted it from the box on the ground up to the painter's ladder, and now I'm going to attach the bolts to the hangers from the ceiling. Here our split washer and our nut. Split washer and nut. Okay, that is secure. Now let's wire it up. Okay, so the way I had it before was this orange wire on number one by itself. This is for the opener. Then I had another wire with a stripe on it here on number two. Then I had these camera wires that were on number two with that wire. So there's three wires on here. And then I had this wire with the black stripe for the two cameras at the bottom of the door on number three. Your wire colors might be different, so just write them down before you start. Ah, good and tight. This one's loose. Let's do that again.
check this one, make sure it's tight. And let's uh, tie up all of our wires and plug it in. Any wires here, we can reach our button, our screws. Got this tied up so it'll never fall into the chain. This one gets the Good Housekeeping Award for tidy wiring. Without the trolley, the door is not connected. I don't want any load on it. Make sure everything works okay. Okay, stop before our limit switch. Our chain has got the right amount of sag to it. Not too much, not too little. It's just barely below the rail, right about even with the bottom of the rail. So got room for thermal expansion there. Now I think I can wind it back and connect the trolley to our cameras. And it reversed. Okay, the reverse cameras are working good. Time to put the trolley back on. And connect this back up. Let's get our pin through there and our wire. We got the pin, wire retainer trolley is disconnected so let's go ahead and connect it if it doesn't connect then just lower the door raise the door manually to get it to latch in okay the trolley's on now we should be able to raise the door Job done.